Okay, it's 11 o'clock, so we'll kick off today's webinar. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, today's 15-minute Friday is using Synchro Pro for workspace clash detection. I'm Sue Dengenis, the Director of Marketing for Synchro Software, and uh, I invite all of you who uh, aren't already connected with me on LinkedIn to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, today's webinar is being presented by Mazen Falawi. Mazen is part of our project delivery team in Berkeley, California. He has a master's degree in civil engineering and construction management from UC Berkeley. And for those of you not familiar with our project delivery team, they provide services to support the implementation and ensure the success of 4D on a company or a project level. Um, they'll help create 4D models, run project review meetings, um, uh, help you optimize and validate schedules and uh, lots of other services. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, you can do so on our website. Uh, so thanks again for joining us this morning. Uh, you can uh, submit questions throughout the webinar and we'll get to as many uh, of them as we can at the end of the webinar. Uh, Mazen, you ready to get started? Yes, thanks Sue. Let's get started. So uh, if you can see my screen, I have in front of me a model loaded up and the look ahead schedule for the couple of weeks uh, that are following. So before I do anything, I'm going to play the look ahead schedule and see what's, what we have in front of us. So as you can see, there are workspaces popping up in the schedule. And the way I've set up these workspaces is that I've created appearance profiles for each trade. And this way I can assign the same workspace as the 3D object to different tasks following different appearance profiles that will indicate which trade is working on that place. And then I can visualize the flow of trades throughout the project in that look ahead plan. And for those of you who are not familiar with how workspaces are created in Synchro, you can either import them automatically from any BIM software such as Revit or IFC, or you can create them in Synchro Pro from a bounding box, a shared bounding box like these sets of vertical elements, or uh, by extrusion where you draw a shape and then extrude that, like the workspace right here. Um, so I'm gonna, I already saw some clashes from running the an animation, but I'm gonna run a spatial coordination test to, to make sure these cl clashes are there. So the way to do that is you go to spatial coordination in the navigator tab, right click, add a new spatial test. I already have one right here. And what I did here is that I clicked on selected 3D objects. So the clash detection will run only on the selected 3D objects. And then I went to the 3D objects tab and because workspaces are stored on a separate tree, it's easy to select all of them and run clash detection on that. So I select all the workspaces and then right click run test. And this window pops up right here, which shows the clashes. So the first three clashes we can see here are the same 3D object, which is the same workspace, but with two different trades working at the same time for an overlap of four hours in the first case, one day in the second case, and one day in the third case. And I can click on these clashes and it'll show on the project where these clashes are happening. And the fourth clash, it looks like the let me look at the legend. The steel workers are working on the columns while the carpentry crew is working on stripping the formwork of the slabs. This clash is okay, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But let's try to fix these. So I'm gonna click on exit. These sets of activities are non-critical as we can see from the schedule. So I'm gonna push this activity by one day. So I go to task properties links and I'm gonna add a one day delay and then click on home reschedule. Let me play the animation again to see what's happening. And as you can see right here, the boxes are not overlapping anymore. So this is basic clash detection, but what we what you can see right here is that there has been a clash that is not detected. And that's because it's associated to a 3D path. So the way what I did here was that I associate, I assigned this workspace 
to the box that's moving to the same 3D path so I can see the footprint and see if something happens, uh, if there's a safety clash down there. So the way to detect these is to set the penetration in the options for that spatial coordination to a value different than zero. When this value is set to zero, the clash detection will run at the very beginning and at the very end of the 3D path. If I set this to 100 millimeters, then the clash test will run at each 100 millimeter increment of that 3D path. So now I'm going to select, I'm going to change this value to 100, and then I'm going to go to the resources tab, and this time I will select all the location resources as well as the equipment that are moving. And I'll run the clash detection again. And here's the window that popped up. So this clash is the clash that we inspected earlier and found out that it was okay. And here we see the clash between the workspace moving in of the 3D pass moving into the workspace of the carpentry crew, which is also okay. Uh, we have to be aware of these and then check if they're okay or not on our project. So they could be or could not. These all look like the set two clashes for the first box and then two clashes for the second box. But these clashes don't look okay. If we zoom in, it's a forklift that's moving into the footprint, the projected, the projected footprint of that box right here. And this is the same clash, which was detected at the entry and then at the exit of the two 3D object. If I zoom in closer on the project and then on the focus time, I can see that these 3D, two 3D paths clash with each other. Now I did that on purpose just to show that 3D path can clash with each other. So the way to fix this is I can go here and add a couple of hours of delay and then reschedule and the clash will be gone. One other cool feature about the spatial coordination test is that once you run clash detection on 3D objects, select as 3D objects, and then make changes to your model after that, you can click on restore 3D selection, and then your 3D selection that you did earlier for the previous clash will be automatically restored. And you don't have to run the clash if nothing has changed. You can just click on show test and show faster, and then you can print or export to PDF your clash detection results. And I'll show you a printout and then a 3D PDF. This is a printed report automatically generated from Synchro for the clashes. And right here is a print as a 3D PDF and you can see that you can move the objects to inspect stuff. You can also add viewpoints to, um, to make people aware of clashes in meetings. So if I click right here and then from 3D, Mm, enable markup and then I can draw a circle here and it will be automatically saved as a viewpoint that I can export or a cloud or write something. So that's about all I wanted to cover for this webinar and now I'll answer any questions if there are any. Okay great, thanks Mazen. Um, if anybody has questions please submit them and uh, we'll go through them. So there's a couple here. Um, can you explain the difference between a soft clash and a hard clash? Yes, so you can see that if you click on the spatial coordination test that you created, you can edit the options to select if it's a soft clash detection type or a hard clash. So a soft clash will allow you to edit a clearance. So there would be, an, an, like, if you have an object that's not clashing with another object but getting as close as a thousand millimeters or you can change the unit to meters. As two meters it will detect that as a clash. And if I choose hard then I can click a tolerance which is the opposite of the soft clash which means that if two objects only clash for a distance that I define let's say two centimeters then it won't, will not be detected as a clash in the spatial coordination test. 
Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, what's the difference between uh, clash detection in Synchro and clash detection in Navisworks? Um, clash detection in Navisworks is used more to find design clashes. So the clash detection uh, tests that are run in Navisworks are more to, uh, for 3D objects and to change the design. But in Synchro, you run clash detection for workspaces and some 3D objects like equipment, but you're not going to be changing the design as much. You're going to be changing your schedule or your construction plan to avoid these clashes. So in summary, uh, Navisworks clashes are more for design changes, and then Synchro clash detections are more for construction schedule changes. OK, very good. Why well, don't, oh, we've got one more here. Um, from a workflow perspective, let me just uh, see if I can. Sorry, one second here. Okay. From a workflow perspective, when do you suggest starting to use clash detection during a project? Okay, so depending on how you do your schedules, there are many ways to do this, but I suggest running clash detection at each phase. So preliminary clash detections can be run at the earlier phases of the project to notice clashes between cranes and like high level clashes. If I show something here, let me play back the animation to show that. And then, so here I modeled a workspace to show the whole area so it's not very ac accurate. So you can use that for preliminary clash detection. But where clash detection is most useful is at the look ahead phase. So in each look ahead plan, when things become clearer, when we know more how trades are going to flow, we can run spatial coordination to coordinate that. And then if you want to go more in detail in uh, like power plant component replacement operations, you can run clash detections at the micro level to see if a forklift can fit between two equipment, if uh, some movements are clashing for 3D path. Okay, terrific. Uh, another question, can we create a rule set to customize clash detection? Um, I'm not sure what this means, but uh, here are the options that you can use for 3D path. And one option I did not go over, so we went over soft, hard, and penetration. There's ignore objects in the same 3D file. So if you don't want to detect too many clashes where you'll be overwhelmed and not and miss the important ones, you can check this option, which will ignore clashes that come from the same uh, import, import source. OK, and uh, the last question here, when will the video be posted? And we will have it posted by the end of today, uh, US time. Um, I'll also send you a link to everybody who's registered, so you'll have it, so you don't have to wonder when it's going to be available. Um, just in closing, a couple quick um, notes. Uh, there are two advanced training classes for Synchro Pro going on. Uh, uh, the first one is in Berkeley by the team, um, uh, Mazin's team, and that is January 26th to 27th. It's a two-day course, and it is advanced. And then there's another advanced training course going on in London, uh, February 2nd to 3rd. So if you're interested in either of those classes, uh, get in touch with me and I can give you the details or anyone at Synchro um, can pr provide the details on those. Um, but that's about all we have time for today. Thanks again everybody for joining us and uh, we will be having another webinar next week. So if you're interested and you're not registered, um, please get in touch and uh, we'll sign you up for uh, the future webinars. Thanks very much and have a great weekend. Thank you.